So you haven't paid attention to the news in the last couple of years, and now you hear that the governor of Alabama is on the brink of an impeachment investigation. Here's a guide to get you caught up. Robert Bentley, a Tuscaloosa-based dermatologist, was elected in November 2010, appointing Rebecca Caldwell Mason as communications director. Mason, a resident of Tuscaloosa, had worked on the Bentley campaign. At the beginning of the next year, Rebecca Mason's husband, John Mason, joins the administration as director of the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives. Later, we'll find out that he's making $91,000 annually. As re-election approached in 2013, Mason left the Bentley administration to lead communications for the upcoming campaign. She then formed RCM Communications, which was paid more than $426,000 by the Bentley campaign during the 2013 and 2014 election cycle. In November of 2014, Governor Bentley wins a second term, defeating Democratic candidate Parker Griffith by a historic margin. Bentley also set up a charitable organization to handle leftover campaign funds. The Bentley campaign owes half a million dollars to Robert Bentley in the form of a personal loan. In January 2015, according to divorce records released later in the year, Diane Bentley, the wife of the governor, did not want to attend his inauguration. That same month, Bentley appointed Rebecca Mason as senior political advisor. As a political advisor, she is not a state employee. Later, it is reported that Mason works as a contractor or employee of the shadowy nonprofit Alabama Council for Excellent Government. No one in Bentley's administration will confirm her salary or employment, but she regularly accompanies Bentley on trips around the state and country. In July of 2015, Robert Bentley and his wife Diane marked their 50th wedding anniversary. The very next month, in August 2015, Diane Bentley files for a divorce from the governor, citing complete incompatibility of temperament. Bloggers and others in the state point to the very close relationship between Rebecca Mason and the governor. In September of 2015, an Alabama Republican Party leader calls for the resignation of Governor Bentley. Representative Alan Farley asks Attorney General Luther Strange to look into allegations that Bentley had misused state funds in the divorce or the cover-up of an affair. In March of 2016, Alabama Law Enforcement Secretary Spencer Collier reveals to AL.com that he has seen evidence of an affair between Bentley and Mason. Bentley fires Collier by the end of the day. It also comes to light that there are recordings of illicit phone conversations between Governor Bentley and Rebecca Mason. The next day, those recordings are published on AL.com. Several days later, Rebecca Mason resigns as senior political advisor. AL.com then reported that the governor had purchased several burner phones at the Tuscaloosa Best Buy. The state auditor, Jim Ziegler, initiated a formal investigation into the governor's misuse of state funds. The Ethics Commission responds by assigning a special agent to the case. In April 2016, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency confirmed that they used a state aircraft to pick up Governor Robert Bentley's wallet and fly it down to him to his home in Fort Morgan in December of 2014. Also in April, 23 lawmakers in the Alabama House of Representatives signed impeachment articles against Governor Robert Bentley. AL.com reports that Bentley had taken Mason to a Celine Dion concert in Las Vegas on a state plane and that he might have violated campaign laws in the process. In September of 2016, Alabama House of Representatives clerk Jeff Woodard issues subpoenas to Governor Robert Bentley, former Bentley advisor Rebecca Mason, and others for documents as part of an investigation of impeachment articles against the governor. In February of 2017, four Alabama state senators began drafting rules that would govern an impeachment trial of Governor Bentley. And in March of 2017, the special counsel overseeing the impeachment investigation of Governor Robert Bentley plans to issue a written public report to the House Judiciary Committee on April 7th. Now you're all caught up. For AL.com, I'm Ian Hopkins.